Hey everybody, I'm Dean Bano, it's Hollywood Hair Guy, here on the set of My Milady Shoot. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to do an updo called Mod Bombshell. Now the first thing I wanna do is just dampen the hair. So I'm just using a little bit of water and just hitting the root area because that's where I wanna build a really strong foundation. So I'm putting water on and then I'm just gonna use the foundational mousse that's really gonna help give me body and volume. Automatically when I say mod, you know we're gonna go back to the 60s. When I apply the mousse, I love just really focusing on the root area because that's where I wanna build body and volume and I need a concrete foundation to really support the style because bombshells don't just happen, it takes work. Now once we put the mousse on the base, you can start to blow it out. Now I just wanna do a rough blowout because I, wanna, I don't want to smooth that texture, I don't wanna do anything but build that base up. So a lot of times I'll just start on low heat and I'll just start in the front and just kind of direct this back. Now the first thing I want to do in starting the style, I want to create a part line. And I'm going to create it right over her left eye. So just go right up. And I like to counter in going to the center of the head so it's a little on a diagonal. In order to determine where the halo part starts. What I like to do, I like just to lay the comb right on her head and where the comb leaves the head is where I wanna start my halo part. And I'm just gonna start sectioning. And I just like to go a little at a time and really focus on creating a nice, clean section. And I'm just gonna continue this around the head, doing the exact same thing. So once I have this section, I just like to twist this up and clamp it out of the way so I can just create a nice clean workspace. We already have the side part here. I'm actually just gonna take all of this hair and gather it all back, because we're gonna come back to that later and I just like a nice clean workspace. So now you can see the sectioning we have a really nice strong halo part. All of the excess hair is pinned in the back and now I can actually start my back combing technique. So I take this halo section down and now it's really important to take like the first half inch horizontal section. Just gonna comb that up and we just wanna clip this out of the way so we have a nice clean workspace. Now, I'm gonna take horizontal subsections and just remember I'm gonna bricklay it. Now, when I talk about bricklaying, just imagine, I mean, look at a brick wall. Take a picture of the brick wall. Look at the construction of the brick. You have one brick and then you have two bricks. One brick, two brick. So that's what I do when I'm backcombing because if you take one section the entire way, it's never gonna fuse together. I'm just taking a quarter of an inch subsection. Now, the way I like to backcomb is I start about two inches from the scalp, I put my comb in, and I push and I pack the hair down to the scalp. I wanna make sure when I back comb, I do the process properly and I actually pack it down to build that cushion to create a foundation. Cause you want pliable hair, but you need it to be strong. Now, this is where you can really lock in massive amounts of body and volume because you want it to stay. So once I have that section, I take a little bit of dry shampoo and I just give it a couple of blasts right on the base. And from there, this is gonna help to lock that back combing in even more. The reason I love dry shampoo is it helps to create a really nice texture in the hair without making it sticky and gummy. Sometimes you can use a hairspray if you want. I love dry shampoo because it also absorbs any excess moisture. Now I'm using a fine tooth bone comb. I love the tail because it helps me get really clean sections, but that fine tooth is really crucial if you want a really tight pack for back combing. So just continue to back comb it out. So now once I finish this halo section, a lot of times I'll like to mix it up and just turn her around and if I see any spaces, I literally will pick up a section of hair and I'll blend it together. I wanna to make sure that I don't comb any of that back combing out. 
So I'm literally just gonna take this hair, twist it up, and clip it out of my way. Because now I wanna move on to the side part. I'm just gonna drop this down. Now instead of back combing, I'm gonna back brush because I just wanna create a little bit of body and volume. I do not want these sections to upstage my bombshell. So for this, I'm just gonna take a nice narrow brush. So I, much like I did for this section, I'm gonna keep this section free. So I'm just gonna clip that out of the way. Now I switch this up to a brush because I just want a little bit of back combing. Not as much as with a fine tooth comb. And I'm just gonna work my way around the entire head. Again, just doing a little bit of back combing. And you can see these longer bristles really help to grab the hair to help push and pack that hair down to the scalp. Now once you finish this side, you can see there's a little bit of body and volume, but not a lot. Now I'm gonna transition and start working on the other side. But remember, I still wanna clip that excess hair out of the way. And now I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this section. And just so you can see the difference, I'm gonna use a different type of clip. This is gonna be with the duckbill, so I know it's on that side. And remember again, you're working on the hairline, so be careful on how much dry shampoo you use. So now the next thing I want to do is gather the sides that I've just back brushed and I want to create a little low side pony. Now I can focus on the bombshell body and volume to really smooth it out and get some really great glossy shine. So this section that I saved, I'm going to continue to save that and just keep that out of the way. All of this I want to start to smooth back. So just lightly graze the hair. I don't want to push the bristles all the way through the hair because I don't want to take out any of that back combing. But I really want to just kind of smooth it down. Now you can see how it's starting to take shape. You can see where it's really building beautiful body and volume. And because we've packed so much hair, we can create, if we want to make it bigger or smaller, just by utilizing a tail comb to go in and lift this up. And we're gonna be adding hair to really smooth it out and make it really glossy and shiny. But we really always wanna be conscientious of what that silhouette and that balance is gonna be for the final style. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is take this section that I've saved. I'm just gonna comb through this. And this is where I just wanna add a little bit of shine and I kinda of wanna smooth it out. So I take a flat iron, just gliding this through. I don't want it poker straight, but I want to start to create some more shine. And I just place this over top, and now I'm gonna use my fine tooth comb again, but now I'm creating smooth texture over the back combing. I love a, like a light hairspray that I can build, which is really key. So I just give a couple of sprays of hairspray, and I go right in to start creating that smooth texture. Remember, light use of hairspray frequently. So you can start to really build that beautiful, smooth, silky shine. If you don't layer it, you're gonna get sticky. And I'm not a fan of sticky. So just light spray. Now, once you get to this point, I'm gonna have her look down because what we need to do is fasten this and get it out of our way so we can work effectively on the side pieces. So with this, I'm just gonna scoop it up in my hands, much like you were gonna do a ponytail and just kind of comb it back into place. So once you have it scooped into the pony, I like to wrap it around my finger and this is really important because I just created a little pin curl. Now I choose where I want to fasten this based on if I want more body, less body, and then I just anchor it in with a regular long 
bobby pin. And I scoop and I anchor. Now we have to do the sides. So I'm gonna come around to the side. The section that I've clipped away is what I'm gonna be flat ironing. When I flat iron, I like to go in and make quick, short movements. So there's no lines of demarcation, no bends, no buckles. And you have just really beautiful, smooth, shiny hair. So now once you've flat ironed and you're ready to actually smooth that style down, so I just like to take a little bit of hairspray and then we just glide our hands across and just start to scoop this back. And you can just gather this into a pony. And this is when, before you do your ponytail tie, I always just check my work, make sure it's nice and smooth. And you can just take a ponytail tie and fasten it. So what I like to do is just create a really simple knot. And you just anchor it in and push. I purposely do the knot a little offset so it's not completely symmetrical and right in the back. Because a lot of times you have to consider what they're wearing. If they're wearing you know, a sleeveless gown or if they have a collar or anything like that, you always have to be aware of it. Plus it's all about your balance and your design. Now, this I just like to hook in and anchor it up. Hook and anchor. This portion, I'm not gonna pin because that's where I wanna fasten my fishtail braid. So I need a little space, I need a little hair cave, if you will, to put the end through there so I have a place to wrap. So now once I've checked my balance design, I make sure it's the direction I want it to go. Here's a couple of little tips that I use constantly when I do stuff on camera, but trust me, you can use it for weddings or any special events. It's really, um, I, I wanna say it's like your secret weapon, just FYI. And it's powder. I love using powder because right now, what's, what's kind of shocking to me is this part line. So I love to use a little fiber and just kind of puff it in to conceal any of that light scalp. Now, I don't wanna put a ton of product on, but I just wanna do a light dusting just to knock down the whiteness of her scalp. You can take a little bit of hairspray to just kind of seal it in. Not a lot, just a little. You don't have to worry about it running if you're sweaty because it's a really fine powder. So now I'm gonna use a pre-done fishtail to finish off the style. Now I just like to use an alternate color because it's a juxtaposition with your bombshell smooth and the mod fantastic new age disheveled. So you can see at the very top, I just did a loop, tied it with a ponytail tie, and this is really perfect for anchoring because I'm gonna utilize my bobby pins and just fasten it into the little hair cave that I left open specifically for this. So for this, I'm gonna utilize my matte bobby pins into the fishtail. So once you have the fishtail anchored in your little hair cave, this is where you have a ton of options to really have creative freedom. I love to incorporate this into a hair veil and just gliding it through and just wrapping it around the head. Now, once you get to this back knot area, hook some of the fishtail and lock it in. Now, I just have one bobby pin, which is perfect for right now, because with this extra tail piece, I can take and I can tuck and completely conceal. And you see this anchor? You see that ponytail tie? You can glide it down, lift the fishtail and tuck it under. So now once you have the fishtail where you want it to be, I love to use really big hairpins where I can hook and anchor it in. And I can continue this all the way around.
So anytime you have a little bit of a fishtail that sticks out, I just use the hairpin, anchor it in to really create a nice smooth texture. Once you're finished, I like to use the spatula again and just go in and lift it up and push it around wherever I need it to be. If I want more body and volume, all I'm doing is reactivating that back coming that I've pushed in and I'm just lifting it out to create more texture. So this is a perfect time for you to really just clean up any of your work. Check your balance, make sure it's really nice and smooth. Because the fishtail is an extension, if you feel like it's really frizzy, what I like to do, just take a scissors and trim it up. It's not her hair, she won't miss it. Now, just to recap what I've done, we've created a lot of body and volume for that bombshell look. We have the disheveled fishtail, which is that modern flair. Nice, smooth back brushing done on the bang area, all fastened, put together, balanced design is all ready to go. And so this is our final reveal. One thing that I love to do when I do this on clients is once you take everything off, have them stand up. Stand up for me, would you, doll? And this is a great way to just check your work. You're at eye level. If there's any pins that need to be just tucked in. And again, this is the perfect mod bombshell. I, I am blessed with a really amazing job. I work with celebrities. I work on television and film, but this is the key. Everybody has value. And when you can treat your clients like a celebrity, you are gonna change their lives. It's not just the execution of a style. It's about your mannerisms. It's about how you deal with people. But not only doing the hair, now we're gonna transition into a photo shoot and just take it to the next level. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to prep a fishtail braid. I just have a piece of extensions. I'm gonna use blonde hair because it's easier to see. I just have these little T-pins that I like to anchor that extension down so it doesn't move. I split the section in two pieces and I just started a little bit so you can see how it starts to crisscross. You take a section from the outside, cross it over, and incorporate it into the other section. Always remember to take from the outside and crisscross in. The larger the section you use, the thicker the braid is gonna be. The finer that section, it'll start to look more like a fish tail, the actual bones of a fish tail. So from the outside, in, and crisscross. And because I have really big hands, I just like to hold it just like this. That way my index finger and my thumb can do the separation and it can crisscross. Once I crisscross, I slide that section down just to separate so I don't have any tangles. I just continue this process. Outside, scoop in, small section, crisscross, hold, and separate out. Now when you do a fishtail, you have a couple of options. The smaller the section, the more it looks like a fishtail. I like to use a combination of both, large and small, just to kind of mix it up. When you fishtail, and if you're learning for the very first time, I always say take bigger sections. Once your hands have that dexterity and you feel really comfortable and you feel like, okay, I can experiment. I can move on to other, other techniques and styles. Try a 16th of an inch, try a quarter of an inch, and see that difference, but also do the exact same thing all the way down and look at the pattern and how it forms. So I just continue to do this right on down and you can see where I took really small sections here and larger sections here and just how it kind of breaks up the fishtail and it gives it some interesting texture and it just mixes it up a little bit. So now when you get to a stopping point, I'm just gonna go ahead, and this is really important too because it'll, it'll make a big difference when you start to pull the braid apart. Is you see where this, this ponytail tie is. I like to just take a tail comb and pull it down because it loosens this up. 
Now, what I like to do is distress it. So I pull it on each side and I pull it apart. And what this does is it starts to really expand the fishtail and it creates beautiful texture. And if this is too much, grab here, grab here, and pull it down. And here you have it, all the things you need to do the perfect mod bombshell.